Hi, this is Jim uh, Campolongo, and today I thought I'd just run through changing some strings. Sorry about, I, this is about as good a perspective as I could get. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, sometimes things that are obvious to me, um, people ask me about. So, uh, and I, you know, it's a good question, and I do a couple of things that might be helpful. So I'm going to change strings and run you guys through it. I hope it isn't boring. It'll probably be long, <laughs> but uh, you know, 15 minutes, I, I'm guessing. Okay, so the first thing I do is I have this. This is great. Diodario makes some. Maybe you guys have them. It's a string winder, but it also has this little, this little cutter on it. Now, I loosen all my strings at once, and I do things... Uh, a bit uh, aggressively like sometimes people don't do this they think it changes the tension on the neck I'm sure it does but I just want to get it done so I loosen all of them I cut it in the middle all of these come off um, well this one fought me a little bit and uh, oh, I left a knee on there sorry okay and I don't have any magic knots in the tuning peg. I just want these things to come off and come off easily. I have a top loader, so this is where it's really advantageous. I don't have to turn it over um, there. And then I always tie everything up so it's a neat little circle of, of stuff. I don't like to leave stuff laying around. Okay, now I clean it. I use my Diodario spray cleaner and I just shoot it all over the place not too carefully I just want to get off the sweat and grime I change my strings for every gig and if I'm doing a, a session I will change my strings midday and I don't really like to but you can really hear the difference I think I have acidic sweat and uh, you know, it's 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 a kind of a curse. Uh, so I change strings a lot. So I just want the things to come off. I use a Q-tip. I try and get these good Q-tips. They're a little hard to find, but they don't bend in the middle like new uh, Q-tips. And I just get in there and clean it up a little bit. I would think my guitar is happier when it's clean, um, if you will. Um, there was a lot of junk in there, and I just that's from one. 70 minute show okay that I played on Monday okay um, now I apply my lemon oil cleaner and conditioner I do that every time I change them it's uh, not super oily um, you know it's not like this stuff is dripping off the neck it just kind of moisturizes it a little bit and I apply it to the frets the fret board I should say which mine you can see uh, there's no more finish on it. I might do the back too. Let me get it. Sorry if this picture isn't uh, Martin Scorsese, but you get the idea. Okay, so I applied it to the neck. You can see the divots on the neck. Yeah, see all those divots? And, uh, you know, the guitar's been banged up a little bit. You can see the the bottom there um, and when I got this guitar it was looked brand new it had been refinished and I actually this was a brand new pick guard I had a replacement pick guard but I missed this one so I put this thing back on I use that adhesive uh, kind of clay stuff and uh, it's holding pretty good and I, I feel like I felt bad about separating it <laughs> Uh, but it fell off a couple gigs because no, literally nothing was holding it. Okay, now for something that might be helpful. Maybe everyone here does it. I get a pencil and I go through each groove of the nut like so. And what it does is it kind of lubricates the nut where the string passes through and that's where a string will stick not only on behind the nut bending stuff but just in general it might stick there and that this graphite's like a lubricant some nice gentleman in Finland gave me uh, um, 
Teflon, but it, it kind of would spray all over the place. It was really good, but the graphite works great and it's a little easier to manage. Okay, so everything's ready to go on. I use these uh, Diodario Extra Light on this thing, nickel wound 009 through 042. Those are the strings I use, I like. I changed gauge on different guitars, um, and I can't say, uh, you know, there's a compromise using nines. On your right hand, I feel like you catch, there's less string to catch, but it's just a little easier to play, and at this point, um, I just want my left hand to survive <laughs> another, you know, 20 years, so I don't want to put on anything heavier now. I've been using 09 since I was 14 years old, at least on my main guitars. Um, but I have others, you know, you can probably dig dig a little bit. I'm on the Diodario website if you want to see what strings I use on other guitars. Anyway, speaking of 14 years old, when I used to buy strings, they were all individually packed. And now they all come in this plastic thing to what I guess is to save the environment. And uh, so I put them on two at a time now. Um, they're color coded. This one's just kind of a regular color. I stick that guy in there. And it's nice because it's a top loader. Real easy. About as easy as it's going to get. Um, and here we go. Okay, now um, I want to get this part without the tripod falling okay um, okay now I go about two tuning pegs up on a low string that's I kind of eyeball it it's not super rocket science but I go about two tuning pegs up it's not going to fill the the little tree deal that's sticking out there it's going to look really neat okay and I want that um, and yeah, I just stick it in the hole. Thank you, Leo Fender. You were a genius. Wrap it around once and I hold it down, as you can see with my first finger, and use this wonderful invention to tighten. And there'll be a couple of winds on there with more to come as I stretch it. And it's sitting on the, uh, the saddle, so it's good. It's tight enough not to come off. I go to the, f the fifth string, same thing. I go two tuning pegs, maybe a little bit more, um, cut it. I put it in a circle so it's easy to pick up. I don't like to leave trash around, especially if it's at a session. Uh, I don't think engineers appreciate guitarists uh, leaving their excess strings laying around in the studio. I've heard him complain and one guy pointed out that um, he appreciated that I threw him in the garbage can, so I've always made a point to do it. And you want the engineer on your side. Okay, anyway, this one's sitting there ready to go. Um, well, now we have strings four and three. No big deal. Everything's the same. No magic knots, because you want them to come off easy when you change them. For, uh, the black is the fourth string. And I put them in there two at a time, because that's what you have to deal with here. And then the G, which is green. And uh, the four strings ready to go. Again, I go maybe a little more than two tuning pegs. Cut it here with this marvelous invention. Wrap it in a circle so I could pick it up. I don't have to rely on my non-existent fingernails. Okay, put it in the little hole there. Uh, let me get it more in the picture here. Um, wrap it around and wind. And it's going to be very neat. It's going to look good down there. I don't like it when the... I mean, you, you don't really have the option on this kind of style tuning peg. Um, but I don't like it when the strings are like flopping around and I've actually got a shock once um, by my 
excess string that was flopping around touched something and I got shocked. So, but I don't like the look of, look of it either. I like, you know, to look like I thought about the gig, like before I got there. Maybe, maybe too much, I don't know. But I, I'll try and, you know, have a neat presentation. Okay, so I cut this. It, it's almost three tuning pegs because the string's getting smaller. And I really want my G string to sit low, uh, close to the headstock. Because I do behind the nut bending uh, and you know, sometimes a major third up. And I want it really secure. You know, I don't want it up high. Uh, you know, it's it's just, I like it if it goes down. And everything will go down a little bit more as we, we stretch them, which I'll show you what I do. Okay, now we have to untangle these guys. Gently. Okay. Uh, the I think that's purple whatever it's the it's the B string get it in there again the top loader makes things easy you don't have to flip it around and then the last high E get it in there there we go okay now on these I might go three tuning peg lengths because they're thinner, obviously, and I want them to sit uh, closer. So you have to kind of eyeball it. Obviously, we've run out of tuning pegs, but I just kind of eyeball it. And these are the strings I really try and mangle a little bit so I can pick them up. Um, sometimes they, they just keep slithering away. <laughs> okay, it's in the little trash pile. Here we go. B string right in the little hole. Make sure it goes all the way so it doesn't slip out. I wrap it around and wind as quick as I can. Sometimes I watch a movie when I do this because uh, I do it a lot. Um, okay, that one's getting tighter. It's sitting on the saddle. You don't want to do it where it's missing the saddle. You have to kind of keep an eye on both ends. Doing the same thing on this, the high E, I'd say that's probably three and a half tuning pegs or something. I mean, you don't have to get out a ruler. It's basically, you know, if you ballpark it, you'll be good. You just don't get too many winds. And then the string starts wrapping on each other. And I don't like that. I don't like the way it looks. You get it in that this little hole and make sure it goes all the way it's more secure and it won't ever slip. I'm having trouble seeing it. I'm in my own shadow here. There we go. Okay. Boom. It's in there. Wind it up. Okay. Since I wanted a, wide, a lot of winds and wanted it close to the uh, headstock, it takes a little longer. I just eyeballed the saddle. It's sitting on there. We'll fine-tune after this and with careful placement. Okay, so all the strings are on. Now, sometimes I've played friends' guitars and the spacing's really inconsistent and uh, with these threaded saddles or the brass saddles that don't have threads. That's why I like threads. Um, so I can place these. I squeeze all the saddles together. That looks really good. Um, they look symmetrically even, okay? And now I get out my old E tuning fork. A lot of tuning forks are A, um, but I use an E. And you can see here, it looks like somebody's hit it 10,000 times. Well, here goes 10,001. So I got myself a high E. I could usually get pretty close, but it's nice to have this. That was an E. That's a B. G. D. Floppy. Now. A. And that's an E. 
okay. So now I do something that some people disagree with. Again, I take all my strings off at once. Some people disagree with that, just so you know. And uh, now I do something other people disagree with. Chet Atkins, for one, who knows a lot more about guitar than I do. But anyway, I, I start stretching the string. So it, it's going to stay it's in tune, okay? And my first song, I play at the end of that song. Hopefully I'll be perfectly in tune. Once I do some crazy stuff. 10,002. Now on my low E, wow, that's pretty good. I try to get it at uh, three o'clock. You see how it's, it's, it's like facing the camera. Um, that's the most comfortable position for my arm to be in when I de do stuff like Now that was a whole step half step and It's very comfortable. It's just like a small movement if it's any other way sometimes you have to like do it twice or your arms in this really uncomfortable position. So I manipulate the E string to where my E string tuning peg is in that, uh, waiting to go, okay? So I'm gonna do it again, which might be a little dangerous, but I don't think it's fully stretched. Let's see, now I gotta work for it. Boy, now I've bent the strings all into their positions and the thing is ready to go. Um, I'm, I'm probably get my tuner and fine tune, but it's good. The strings are all stretched and the E sounds good. It's ready to go. And uh, I do that every time I play. Um, if anything, the graphite is going to be a good tip and uh, I guess, I guess that's it. 